Hey, what's going on everybody? Jake here with iSnake2010 and I'm going to show you how I built this amazing habitat for my baby albino red tail boa, Terminal Frost. Alright, the first thing that we want to do is clean the tank with hot soapy water and place the heat pad under the tank in the desired location. Cut three pieces of carpeting to go inside the tank, one for the back and one for each of the sides. The best way to attach the carpeting to the glass is to use a spray adhesive like the one shown here. Place the carpeting inside a box. With the front side facing down, apply a full coat of adhesive to the back side of the carpeting. Give the adhesive approximately three minutes to tack up before placing it inside the tank. Next, we want to place the carpeting inside the enclosure face down. With one fluid motion, lift the carpeting up and press it onto the back side of the enclosure. Repeat this process for the left and right sides of the enclosure. When you're finished, it should look something like this. Notice that you want to leave about 3 to 4 inches of glass exposed at the top of the insulations in order to accommodate suction cups for ornaments and second leveling. You can use acetone, paint thinner, lighter fluid, or even nail polish remover to remove any excess glue. Simply dampen a cloth and wipe down the areas. The next step will be to add our substrate or bedding. I like using bark in all of my tanks because it presents a more natural bedding for the snake. It's going to insulate the bottom of the tank, retaining heat and humidity, and it's very easy to clean. In order to achieve optimal insulation and safety, evenly distribute 2 inches of bark into the entire base of the tank. Not only will this maximize the retention of heat and moisture, it will prevent your pet from laying directly on the heat pad, which could cause injury. I also want to point out that a red-tailed boa is not a normal burrowing snake. They only burrow when they're hunting and want to ambush their prey. By using a bark rather than an aspen, this will prevent the snake from ever burrowing down and burning himself on the heat pad. Any and all new substrates should be pre-treated for parasites. Using a reptile relief spray or Prevenomite, simply apply the product to the substrate accordingly as directed on the bottle. Our next step is going to be to add our hides and our water dishes. Place one hide in the desired location. I always like to press the hide down into the substrate to ensure maximum stability. Place the small water dish on the warm side of the tank. We want to bury this dish almost down to the heat pad. As this water warms, it will disperse into the air and help humidify the tank. Having two hides in the enclosure is ideal, one on the warm side and one on the cool side. Place your second hide on the cool side of the tank. Not only will this provide a safe haven for the snake when he wants to warm up or cool down, but it will also increase the snake's activity. Place your main water dish on the cool side of the tank. This will ensure that there is always cool drinking water for your pet. This water dish should also be large enough for the snake to soak its entire body. Placing small rocks or stones inside the water dishes will help trap any loose dirt or debris, which will always provide a fresh water source for your pet. Placing our props inside the tank should be thought out. These props should be rough and not smooth, and the reason for that is the snake will use these to help shed its skin. Along with having props spread out throughout the course of the tank, it's going to promote activity, which will give your snake plenty of places to hide, and in combination with the bark, this will transform your entire enclosure into one gigantic shedding instrument. The next step would be to add our second level vine system. This process can get very tricky and very time consuming. If you would like to see a step-by-step -step instructional, please refer to the video on my home page, How to Build a Second Level Vine System. I will also post links to these videos in the description. 
There is no exact science in the design of the second level vine system. It's going to be pretty much touch and go, but at the end of the day, it should look something like this. Not only will a second level vine system greatly increase activity in your pet, but it will also increase the living space inside your enclosure. To top it all off, your snake will also use this vine system to help shed its skin. Now it's time to bring our tank to life by adding our ornaments. Simply stick the ornaments to the exposed glass around the perimeter of the insulation, and when you're done, it should look something like this. We no longer have a tank or an enclosure, but we actually have a habitat for our pet. Using some poster tack and some of the loose leaves, we can attach them to the tank in order to camouflage the suction cups. This is for cosmetics only and is done to make the tank look more natural. Next we want to place the cover back onto our habitat and get ready to add our custom cover and overhead lighting. The only lights we're going to need for this particular setup is a daylight and a nightlight. No overhead heating will be required because the custom cover will retain all the heat from the heat pad and will also hold an atmosphere which will greatly increase the humidity levels in the tank. Using a 5% UVB light is ideal for a red tail boa. It is not a desert dwelling animal, so 10% or full spectrum would be way too much. It is also not a rainforest animal, so a 2% light would be too little. 5% is just perfect. Although this is not mandatory, this is very important for your snake to develop in reflecting its natural colors that it would in the wild. Night light is not rocket science. You can use any type of lighting that you want. In this case, I've chosen to use a very low wattage 40 watt blue light. Once you have decided on lights and light fixtures, simply screw the bulbs in and place them on top of the tank in the desired locations. The only thing left to do is to plug in the heat pad and turn the lights on. There is the finished tank and how it looks with all its lights on. The only thing that you guys have to do now is remove the cover, give the tank about 12 hours to dry, re-clean the water dishes, fill them up with water, and you can put your snake into its brand new home. If you have any questions or concerns, please post them in the comment sections, and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.